So we'll start today with visualization. So what this is telling you is when, when you just look at data as numbers, this is how it looks, right? I'm looking at the cast data here. And if I just look at the data, it's just a bunch of numbers thrown at my face. Can't make out anything out of it. But this is a correlation. This is a again a correlation graph, but using a library called Corgram. So if you do uh, uh, just a cor correlation of empty cards, then you will just see the correlation values between plus one and minus one, and this is how it will look. And you won't know which values are more correlated with which one. However, when you use the core, core, it's like you've done it in Rattle already, so I'm not telling you anything new, but I'm just telling you that you can do it using the core gram library instead of using a GUI interface like Rattle. And then if you do, after loading this library, if you do a correlogram of cards, you would see a plot like this. And this is very easy to interpret. So the darkest blue, so the diagonal is white because there's no meaning between a um, correlation of the same variable with itself. If I had if I had colored blue for one, then it would give it, it would sort of indicate that these are very highly correlated, but uh, wouldn't mean anything because of course they are very highly correlated. So the diagonals they are just putting the value names over there, and the darkest blue, let's say the third row second column, which is the um, correlation between cylinder and displacement is very high. And that makes sense, right? Similarly, between weight and displacement is very high. So, and so the blues are being positive. The darker the blue, the more positive it is. And uh, red is negative. The darker the red, more negative is the correlation. Heat map, you understand what is a heat map? It's a very popular way of representation today very commonly used. So they have, uh, what they have created here is a heat map of all the cars. So we have all the car types written down and for each variable or each attribute it shows the distribution. Yeah, so a heat map gives you, once you look at it, it's also called a chloropeth. Uh, you can, uh, it gives you, uh, especially it's used in geographical, you know, spatial, spatial geographical plots where you can use the intensity of the color to convey the uh, type of data or the type of distribution in that area. It's also used in uh, like a distribution diagram like this, but it's very much used, it's very commonly used in geospatial plots. So it just gives you in this clean space, you know, it is difficult to show that amount of data. So what you typically do is either filter it out. Yeah, memory, yes, but let's let's say you have infinite memory. You know, let's say that you don't need RAM, you don't have, you don't have any memory issues, but still just to um, show that data. Yeah. So one is uh, if you everything in one screen, it's too much of clutter, you can't make out anything. If you, um, so then what you normally do is you filter out some and show some parts. Then there is some information loss, right? Or you aggregate and show a summary. So there are different ways of uh, tackling big data visualization, but uh, interpretability becomes an issue if you try to show a lot of things. The human mind is not equipped to take in a lot of information. If I clutter of information on, on a screen. So that is where you need to really use your skills. You will have, you will have seen a lot of plots um, which show, uh, which give a spatial interpretation of a data. Now let's say I want to show that the distribution of crime in India. So the best way to do it is to take a map of India, right? And I can use a heat map. So whichever areas have a lot of crime, I can make them very dark red, for example. Which are low in crimes, I can make them a low intensity color. So this is a typical heat map, and these are called uh, spatial analysis. And uh, there are ways in R to do it. It's not very straightforward, but uh, 
this is an example which tells you should you need to do it this is an example which gives you a step by step process on what you want to how you want to do it so there is a library called sp and a library called map tools which um, help you to do that so you need to load a file okay so firstly you want the map or the diagram on which you want uh, the spatial analysis or the heat map to be drawn you need to have that file in a in your computer and then we load that file and then you project your data on this file so each of your attributes each of your data data points need to ha have an associated latitude and longitude your data also needs to be like that and then you can use the color grower library for creating heat maps etc so a result of that we'll see a few of the you know something like that so they're doing an altitude kind of a plot here for altitudes again these are easier to do in tableau or any other visualization tools but just to make you aware that r gives you the capability of doing it i've used a map of gujarat state and done some and done some plotting on this data so um, I think temperatures. No, not temperatures. This is just the latitude and longitude. They're just showing some data on it, on the state. Okay, so this was just using the raster and the map plot. Um, there is one map plot map tools uh, option so it can be a geographical map like a map of india or map of gujarat what we did see all here it can be let's say your um, you know you can it can be an indoor mapping system you can upload a map of your own house or your own office and do the plot once you have the coordinates on the map you can use that to make the plot you can also do it in uh, using the deducer special plugin there is a in our commander there is a plugin which you can use to do it so this is a heat map using our commander these are box plots which we have already looked now using our commander so basically what our commander does it it gives you a ui for the for the function so what you are passing in the form of uh, variables and um, attributes you can just select it in the R commander window. So you can see what type of plot, what is the x variable, what is the y variable and just say OK and it will plot it for you. Getting back to where we were, that is uh, interactive graphs in R which is uh, basically dashboards. You must have seen graphs where the user can enter some attributes. You can do some filtering or um, you know can uh, drill down into some parts of the data so you can do that in R again and there are um, packages which let you do that so if you see this um, let's see. This is the stocks data. I thought we were doing the both seem to be to the stocks, is it? Stocks height weight. So this is a dashboard which has been created in R. Okay. Uh, and this is a very typical dashboard. So it uh, dashboard typically consists of uh, not uh, are two, three or four graphs, like a few graphs and a few attributes which allows the user to interact directly with the graphs. Right? So here this um, this is the stocks dashboard where you can see the Apple and the Google stocks.
and how it has changed over from November 2013 to April 2014. Apple and the next one is for Google. Yeah, this is not a very good graph because you, it's very good dashboard because you need to sort of scroll through it. Ideally, and if I put select all five, then I have to keep on scrolling. I believe so. This is Apple, then there is Microsoft, then there is Google. But at least you get the idea that you are able to select what you want to say. I'm only interested in the Yahoo, so I'll just see Yahoo and uh, I can select what type of graph I want to see. It's all dynamic, it changes uh, immediately. So I can see bars or a line and uh, I can also select the month, or the unit, whether I want to see it month wise or week wise, let's say year wise, those stocks year wise. So it shows me from 2009 to 2013 every January, July, January, July. So it's a, it's a six month period but with the year at the axis. Okay. So this is your, similarly you have this height and weight of school children. So you can select um, what is your, here you are looking at scatter plots but you are given an option of choosing. So I want to see the how the height varies with their age or I want to see how their height varies with the weight. Okay, I can, uh, if I want to separate male, female, it will do it by category. So how they have done it here, they have shown the males as blue triangles and the females as red circles. Okay, uh, then uh, you can look at um, This is a regression fit which I was talking about. So it's a linear um, regression when I click on the linear checkbox. And what you see here is a line for male and a line for female. If I don't do the male female line just to reduce complication, there is one line and this is where I am trying to plot height from the weight because I see there is a relationship between height and weight. I am trying to plot the height from the weight. The coefficient here is 45.43 and your um, uh, coefficient of the weight, the intercept is 45.43 and the coefficient of the weight of the slope is given by 0.157. Right? So which means for every one unit of increase in weight, your height increases by 0.157, whatever the unit is, centimeters or inches. So that is how you can interpret the uh, linear regression. It uses the LM command which we have just seen at the beginning of the class. However, if you want to do a quadratic, you can also do a quadratic uh, plot which we haven't seen the regression function but the a quadratic plot will see if you look at this scatter plot though we have fitted a straight line the data is not really a, it doesn't look like a straight line which means that after a point of time weight increases but height doesn't increase proportionately so maybe in your grow initially in your growing years your height and weight, as your weight increases, your height increases at a particular rate. But later on, after a certain age, your weight increases, but your height doesn't increase, unfortunately, in the same ratio. So this tells you that this is not really a linear function. It's a, it's a curved function. So you would ideally not plot a linear uh, uh, line here, and you will do a quadratic regression, which will take into account the curve in the data and um, it will not, so basically it's a regression with x with weight as well as weight square. So your function becomes quadratic. Let's see what this is. So here you see there is a smoothing done. There is an alpha parameter which takes into account the local changes, the local curves. So this parameter tells you the amount of smoothing and if you see that the learn that the line 
takes into account the small changes at local points. That is basically these are all curve fitting models, uh, advanced statistical analysis. But you can see how it uh, you can do it in uh, R and it in a dashboard format where you allow the user to interact directly with the data. So Tableau gives you a software where okay, Shushan. So we will just uh, okay. All of you are new to Tableau. That's fine. It's a very easy software where you can pick it up very easily. Okay. So. Um, So I am opening the, can I open the existing data set which you have already seen, it's open, um, let's see the coffee chain, they have some sample data sources. So this is how your data looks like, okay this is how the data looks like. So this is a coffee chain, this is the financial data for the coffee chain. So you have the area code, the every date wise, uh, the product line, the product type, these are categories of um, coffees, product, store, so it's a store level data. So where the store is located at Colorado and uh, budget, budget margin, profit, sales, etc. So this is how your data is. Then um, total expense how much, total sales how much, so this, this is the kind of data. So in Tableau there is something called rows and columns, very simple here. Okay. So let's say you want to see the sales over, you want to see the sales over each for each product, as simple as that. Okay. So what I did was I just put the sales in the columns, sum of sales in the column and each and the product in the rows. So it shows me row wise what is the sale of each product. Okay. Now there are many other things I can do. So say I want to color it by product. So I want each color to have a different product. I want each product to have a different color. So I can put the product in the color, right? So it shows you by different color. I want to change the graph type. I don't want a bar plot. I want a line or a column in this case or a pie chart or a box plot or a bubble chart. Yeah? So, um, I want to size these bubbles by profit. Their sizes change. Which one gives more profit? Let me, where is your, where are you all? So does it give you an idea of the basic things? Then uh, very easily you can do, you know, like say a dashboard. Let's say you want to filter by product. So you can do something like do a quick filter. And here you have all the products, right? So you say that I don't, I want only, I don't want all of them. I want to see only Amarato, Mocha, Colombian, Earl Grey, like that. Simple, no? So you can add your filters here. Let's say you create another sheet. So here I want to see profit by product type. And I also want to see sales. And let's say I want to see
you can play around with these. product type is probably not the best way to do it by each product I want to see the sales and I want to see the profit also I want to see same axis I want to see it as a column bar and somehow not so this is somewhat so for each um, for each product it gives me the sales and it gives me the profit sales it shows in orange and the profit it shows in blue yeah so i can label the pro if i want the profit to be shown as a label so it gives the numbers on top and you can do a lot of other things but uh, this is how you know, play around with Tableau as much as you can. There are tutorials. You can uh, download a trial version and whatever you did in R, you can see just how easily it can be done in uh, Tableau. Once you are comfortable with all the graphs, see there is a map option. You know? So if your data is such that it has a latitude, longitude option, uh, feature or attribute, you can use this map option to see a geospatial uh, So I can show you something or you can even see in the, uh, you know, in the net or in the, there are many advanced uh, things which you can do in Tableau visualization. You can take a look and if you are specifically interested in anything, I am not an expert on Tableau but I have used it reasonably well for a lot of visualizations, dashboards, etc. It uh, is very easy, good, it's a good tool to have for your exploratory analysis and uh, you know uh, presenting something to uh, the client or to the management. Uh, so quickly get something nice and uh, effective, it's very useful. So I've used it to some extent, so to whatever extent I can I'll help you if you have any questions on Tableau. But, uh, just wanted to give you an idea so that you know how easy it is to do things in Tableau. So there is a Tableau public where you can host your sites, host your graphs and everything in um, the web. So then you can do Pareto charts, you can write cumulative frequency distributions, you can do a lot of things uh, in Tableau. 